All right, hello and welcome. I'm John Bachman. We start with breaking news today. Hi, everybody. I'm Bianca De La Garza. Yes, great to have you with us this Thursday. We begin with this prisoner exchange between the Biden administration and Russia, which freed WNBA star Brittany Griner and also left behind retired Marine Paul Wellen. He's still in Russia. Griner was released earlier today as part of that one on one swap for Russian arms dealer and former Soviet military officer Victor Bout, a.k.a. the Merchant of Death. Greiner served a few months of her nine-year prison sentence on drug charges. Whelan has been jailed since December of 2018 on espionage charges trumped up by the Russian government. He and his family say that is all baseless. It's been a lot of reaction to this prisoner swap, and President Biden was touting the release of Greiner today. Newsmax Chief White House Correspondent James Rosen right now joins us live with more on the president's statements. James, good afternoon. Bianca and John, good afternoon to you. For the Biden White House and the State Department, today's breakthrough represents a clear triumph for U.S. diplomacy, but one that senior officials here said is tempered by the continued detention of still other Americans in Russia and beyond. In a deal that first began to take shape back in July, the U.S. and Russia have conducted a prisoner swap. It saw the exchange of Griner, a 32-year-old Texas native and two-time Olympic gold medalist serving a nine-year sentence in Russia after cannabis oiled vape canisters were found in her luggage at Moscow Airport. And she was exchanged for the man you see at left, 55-year-old Victor Boot, a former Soviet military officer and international arms dealer captured in Thailand nearly 15 years ago and imprisoned in America since 2010. Russian media said both received pardons before the exchange occurred in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. Now still detained in Russia, as we have mentioned, is 53-year-old Paul Whelan, a Canadian native who moved to the U.S. as a child and made Michigan his home, a former U.S. Marine and Iraq War veteran who was reportedly discharged from the service for financial improprieties. Whelan had been imprisoned in Russia, has been imprisoned in Russia for four years now, charged with espionage while visiting Russia as a security officer for a private company. Senior U.S. officials said today every deal they have proposed for Whelan's release, the Kremlin has rejected. For this morning's announcement, President Biden brought Sherelle Griner, Brittany's wife, to the Roosevelt Room, where all who spoke emphasized that the elation felt on this day by the Griners does not come at the expense of the Whelans. We never forgot about Brittany. We've not forgotten about Paul Whelan, who's been unjustly detained in Russia for years. This was not a choice of which American to bring home. We brought home Trevor Reed when we had a chance early this year. Sadly, for totally illegitimate reasons, Russia is treating Paul's case differently than Brittany's. BG's not here to say this, but I will gladly speak on her behalf and say that BG and I will remain committed to the work of getting every American home, including Paul, whose family is in our hearts today as we celebrate BG being home. But today's prisoner swap marks the second that the Biden administration has carried out with Russia this year. In April, the two countries exchanged Russian pilot Konstantin Yaroshenko, imprisoned in America since 2011 on drug smuggling convictions, for 30-year-old Trevor Reed, a former Marine who was arrested in Russia in the summer of 2019 and was serving a nine-year sentence on charges that he assaulted Russian police. Now, meeting Brittany Griner in the United, uh, United Arab Emirates on her way home to U.S. soil uh, was the special presidential envoy for hostage affairs, Roger Karsten. He's a former special forces uh, soldier who has held that job since 2020, an appointee of former President Trump. He has now secured the release of more than a dozen Americans uh, detained abroad. One final interesting note on this case uh, today for you, uh, Bianca and John is that the UAE, where the prisoner swap occurred, put out a joint statement with the Saudi government mm -hmm. that said that Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman had played a critical role in today's development involving Brittany Griner. Repeatedly, White House officials, senior Biden administration officials, were asked about any role played by the Saudis or by the Crown Prince, and several times they simply said, without giving any credit to the Saudis, as the UAE-Saudi joint statement did, uh, that various countries were involved. So the Biden administration reluctant to give credit to the Saudis for whatever role they may have played in this wow. development. John and Bianca. That's an interesting note there, James Rosen. Uh, appreciate that update from the White House. Thanks so much, James. Good to see you. Thanks, James. All right, let's get some more perspective on this from former New York City Police Commissioner Bernard Carrick. He joined us, and so does Lieutenant Colonel Tony Schaefer, retired from the U.S. Army. Gentlemen, great to have you both with us. 
Good to see you, John. Thank you. Uh, Tony, let's start with you. And this Victor Bout guy, sure. he's a bad dude. He's a former Soviet military officer who was serving a 25-year prison sentence for, and this is important, trying to kill Americans, also trying to acquire and export anti-aircraft missiles and provide material support for terror organizations. Greiner right. is a basketball player. This seems like a terrible deal. It is, John. Look, uh, when you strip away all the flourishes, you're giving up uh, a prisoner who is going to go back and be an asset to Putin. Remember, the, the Russian laws restrict what the Russian government can do regarding selling. Bout was uh, actually an asset of the Russian government selling the stuff. So at a time that we're essentially uh, at a state of war, near state of war with Russia, you are giving them a, a critical asset at a critical time to put him back in the battle space to do his work, and you're giving up a basketball player. And let me be clear on this. There's others out there besides Paul Whelan who's being detained a guy named Mark Fogel, a teacher who was arrested on a very similar offense summer before last, is also being held. So this, to me, John, is the ultimate virtue signal. There's just literally no good coming out of this regarding what we get out of it other than a, a woke virtue signal by President Biden. Well, uh, you know, we heard President Biden today saying that they're still working to free Paul Whelan. Interesting, uh, Tony, we didn't hear the name Mark Vogel come up today. So thank you for right. bringing that to our attention. But Bernie, as you can imagine, Whelan's family devastated. They say this is a catastrophe for their loved ones. Uh, very gracious, though, saying, you know, we don't want to take anything away from Griner. We're glad that she's been able to be home with her family for the holidays, which is really uh, big of them. But what do you think this says about the administration's priorities? Well, I mean, you could, you know, I, I have to agree with what Tony said. Um, their priorities are uh, skewed, if you will. Uh, the appropriate exchange would have been Whalen. If they were going to do what they did uh, in the exchange and give back basically a, a warrior for Putin, give back a former KGB guy to Putin, well, then give us the Marine. Um, why that wasn't done prior, no idea. Uh, it just seems pretty uh, ironic they would take they would take this warrior for Putin and exchange uh, him for you know a basketball player. And look, I'm not I'm not saying that Griner should be continued should have been continued to be held. Honestly, in all honesty, she shouldn't have been there in the first place. That's the bottom line. But the exchange itself you know, leaves a lot to be desired for the administration and what they're going to do for Waylon and his family. Yeah, you wonder what kind of leverage they have, considering this is the guy they wanted back so bad. What would, you know, the Biden administration give up to get Waylon back? And again, you know, it, it's good any time an American comes home from a Russian prison and under a circumstance like this, uh, but there are still lots of questions. Let's leave that aside for a second, because we also wanted to talk to you guys about these vaccine mandates in the military. Congress is poised to eliminate the Pentagon's COVID vaccine mandate uh, using the authorization of the National Defense Authorization Act. That's a military spending bill. But this is still a major concession by Democrats. Still, though, there's nothing, you know, in this that is going to make whole the military members who were forced out mm -hmm. because they didn't want to get the vaccine. As far as I know, there are no religious exemptions. Uh, latest story I saw on that was the Naval Academy is not gr granting any religious exemptions. Bernie, tell us about the Pipe Hitter Foundation and what you guys are doing to support military members who've been affected because they don't want to get the vaccine. Eddie and Andrea Gallagher, uh, Chief Gallagher from uh, Special Warfare, retired Chief Gallagher, uh, put together the Pipe Hitter Foundation about two years ago, two and a half years ago. And basically, they support issues like this. They support our warriors that uh, come under the, under the thumbs of, uh, of the criminal justice system wrongly. Um, the same for law enforcement. In this case, they're supporting a number of these people. Um, that basically have lost or going to lose their jobs as a result of not getting the vaccine. And the bottom line is, you know, if they're going to eliminate the vaccine at this point for members of the military, then you got to bring back the people that were terminated. We lost a number of people in the special operations community. Um, they shouldn't have been fired in the first place. They're putting their lives on the line for our country. Um, and because they chose for religious reasons or otherwise right. not to get the vaccine. They lost their jobs, their livelihoods, and, uh, and many uh, in harm's way of their family.
No crooked, crooked establishment. None of that twisting the truth. No talking down don't to me. Don't tell me how to think. Don't tell me how to don't think. Don't tell me how to think. I trust Newsmax. Newsmax. They don't tell, tell me, me how to think. think. They let, let me decide. Newsmax. Real news. For real people.